Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hi, everybody. I'm Rosa from SpanishPod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Spanish? In this lesson, you'll learn three different ways to say I love you and a special phrase for Valentine's Day. Let's start with the most common phrase. Te amo. Te amo. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should use it only when you are confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Significas mucho para mí. Significas mucho para mí. It means you mean so much to me. Now, if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone, you can say this phrase. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. It means words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Spanish. And here's one more. What if you want to spend Valentine's Day with someone special? In that case, you can say, ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? It means, will you be my Valentine? Let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Te amo. Te amo. You mean so much to me. Significas mucho para mí. Significas mucho para mí. Words cannot describe my love for you. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Las palabras no pueden describir mi amor por ti. Will you be my Valentine? ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? ¿Quieres ser mi Valentín? Well done. Here's a fun fact. Do you know which songs are most often dedicated to lovers on Valentine's Day in Spain? Some of the most frequently dedicated songs by people in love on this day are Me enamora by Juanes, Juntos by Paloma San Basilio, and Si tú no estás by El sueño de Morfeo. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Spanish and one special phrase for Valentine's Day. I'll see you next time. Nos vemos. Nos vemos! Hi everyone, this is Rosa and today we'll be doing 10 ways to say hello. Let's begin! Buenos días. Good morning. Buenos días. Good morning. So that's what you say like when you wake up, when you greet your yeah, family or friends or whoever basically. <laughs> Hola. Hello. Hola. Hello. Hola is the most common way to to greet someone, but might might not be like the most formal way to do so. 
¿Cuánto tiempo sin verte? Long time no see. ¿Cuánto tiempo sin verte? Long time no see. So this greeting you could only use it, of course, if it's been a long time since you last saw so, like that person. ¿Cómo te ha ido? How have you been? ¿Cómo te ha ido? How have you been? So normally you would use this greeting if uh, some time has passed since you last saw that person. Normally when you ask this, you don't want to be answered only like well or bad, like you want the other person to say a little bit more. ¿Cómo estás? How are you? ¿Cómo estás? How are you? So this one you could use if you want to know how the person is feeling at that moment. Um, they could answer with just uh, like fine or they could like uh, say a little bit more about how they are doing at that moment. ¿Cómo va? How is it going? ¿Cómo va? How is it going? So this one is similar to ¿Cómo estás? But ¿Cómo estás? is more formal. ¿Cómo va? is a bit more casual. ¿Qué tal el día? How's your day? ¿Qué tal el día? How's your day? Yeah, normally you could ask this question maybe, I don't know, in the afternoon, a bit later, to know how that person's day has been, so yeah, but it's not like formal or informal, it's kind of neutral. ¿Qué pasa? What's up? ¿Qué pasa? What's up? So yeah, this is very similar to ¿Cómo estás? But it's way informal, so you would normally only use it with friends. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Buenas tardes. Good afternoon. Yeah, you would say that um, from 12 a.m. on, kind of formal maybe. But yeah, you could also use it with friends. ¿Cómo va todo? How's everything? ¿Cómo va todo? How's everything? This is similar to ¿Cómo estás? But it's a bit more general. Uh, like you're not only asking about the present moment, but like in general, maybe they can tell you about their family, job, um, or other things that are happening <laughs> in their life. So this is the end of today's 10 ways to say hello. Tell us in the comments below how you say hello in your country. Don't forget to subscribe, to like this video, and don't forget also to check uh, SpanishPop101.com. See you later. Hasta luego. Hello, friends from SpanishPod101.com. I'm Efraín. And I'm Diego. And today we're gonna give you a quick guide to survive to Mexican Spanish. Enjoy, Enjoy the video! video. Woo! Mexico is a very beautiful place to visit because of its people, because of its culture, and uh, many other things. But there is something in the communication that becomes slightly difficult because we have so many usages that are not used in other countries. Give us an example, Diego. Yeah, so for example, so we have a difference between the use of pretérito perfecto and the pretérito indefinido because, for example, in, in Spain, they tend to use the pretérito perfecto uh, for an action that ended recently. So they will say something like, Esta mañana he desayunado cereal, or hoy he desayunado cereal. However, in Mexico, we wouldn't say it in that way. We would rather say, esta mañana desayuné cereal, or hoy desayuné cereal. Now, in Mexico, many things are small. And I don't say that because of the size of the things but rather because we tend to use a diminutive in so many occasions. So for example, for showing courtesy or hospitality or kindness, or even when we ask for something and we want to be polite. Uh, so we can use it, for example, in the adjectives. I could say, Efraín es chaparrito. Efraín is short. But we could also use it in the nouns. So we will give you more examples. Diego, como que hace calorcito, ¿no? Sí, hace un poquito de calor. Ah, sonará extraño, pero se me antojó un cafecito. 
Claro, pero en un ratito que terminemos el video, te lo preparo. Ok, y ahorita me lo haces, ¿eh? Claro que sí. Va. There is another huge difference. Mexicans are incapable of saying no. So we create pretext, excuses, and we delay the offer. Uh, that is something that people of other countries hate about us. So it wouldn't be strange to hear things like Sí, pero al ratito. Muy probablemente, pero yo te aviso. Te confirmo al rato. Uh, tal vez, um, al rato quedamos. O nos marcamos después. So when you hear stuff like that, the other person might be declining your petition. For example, Diego, deberíamos ir a una fiesta hoy. Escuché que esta Ana va, va a dar una fiesta en su casa a las 8. Oh, eh, esa noche. Bueno, Ajá. es que ya tenía un plan con unos amigos. Oh. No estoy seguro. Pues invítalos, invítalos. Eh, sí, sí, pero eh, bueno, yo te confirmo más al ratito. Ok. Sí, tú me dices. Sí. Another thing you need to know before coming to Mexico is that we tend to overuse the reflexive pronoun te and the suffix le. As we know, the reflexive pronoun te, we use it all the time whenever we use an reflexive verb. And the suffix le is for an indirect object. However, in Mexico, we use the reflexive pronoun te for a request that we want to make it sound more friendly, Uh, for cheering up the person whom we are asking the, the request. So I could say, Efra, léete el libro de Rayuela de Julio Cortázar. Es muy, muy bueno. Okay, seguro. And the suffix le, we use it for, once again, another, this is another imperative. And we use it whenever we want something to be done quickly. And it's also kind of friendly and cheerful. So, we could probably say, we can use it in the verb correr. It doesn't really need an indirect object. So, it wouldn't be strange to hear in Mexico a thing such as, Efra, córrele, que se nos va a hacer tarde para ir al cine. We will give you another example. Diego, échate este vino conmigo, al fin ya no tiene mucho. No, Efra, tú sabes que yo, yo ya no tomo. Nomás un traguito, Diego. No, 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 no. Ah, qué... Pero, ¿qué, ¿qué tienes? ¿Estás eh, un poco triste o algo? No, oh, no, todo bien, Diego, todo bien. Te veo un poco animado. A ver, cántate una canción. Amigo, ¿qué te pasa? Estás llorando. Pero cántale sí. con ganas. Amigo, ¿qué te pasa? Estás llorando. Seguro es por destés de mujeres. <risa> No hay golpe más mortal para los... So, this is it, friends from SpanishPod101.com. We hope you have enjoyed this video. And give us your thumbs up if you want to come to Mexico and meet some friends here. Uh, let us know your opinion right below. Um, in our comment section. <laughs> and see you in the next video. See you. Hello everybody, this is Rosa and today we'll be doing the top 10 must know vocabulary for the restaurant. So let's go! Camarero, waiter, camarero, waiter. Si no te gusta, díselo al camarero. If you don't like it, say so to the waiter. Like when I was younger, it was very awkward for me to say anything to the waiter, like I wouldn't complain or anything, but yeah, nowadays, if I think that they did something wrong, I think I would say it. Camarera, waitress, camarera, waitress. Esta camarera es muy simpática y alegre. This waitress is very kind and cheerful. In this case, and in a lot of words also in Spanish, like when you want to change the gender from masculine to feminine, you change the last O into an A. So that's the case with camarero and camarera. Menú, menu, menú, menu. Tenemos el menú en inglés y español. We have the menu in English and Spanish. Pedido, 
Order. Pedido. Order. ¿Está listo el pedido de la mesa 12? Is the order for table 12 ready? Agua. Water. Agua. Water. Me quedé sin agua. ¿Puedes pedirle más al camarero? I ran out of water. Can you ask the waiter for some more? Yeah, in Spain, it's not like some other countries in which like you get water just when you're entering the restaurant. So if you want some, you have to order it. And you have to specify that you want tap water as well. Like you'll receive bottled water and you'll have to pay for that, obviously. But yeah, like normally they won't say anything, but you have to ask for it. Yeah. Postre. Dessert. Postre. Dessert. De postre, tráigame una tarta de Santiago, por favor. For dessert, bring me a Santiago cake, please. Santiago cake is typical from Galicia, from the no northern part of Spain. It's mainly like prepared with almonds. It's, it's really good. Chef, 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 chef. Un buen chef tiene que ser muy estricto con la limpieza. A good chef has to be very strict with cleaning. So yeah, in Spanish we pronounce the C-H like che, che, chef. You write it the same way as in English, but the pronunciation is a bit difficult, so be careful about that. Comida basura. Fast food. Comida basura. Fast food. No entiendo cómo la gente puede comer comida basura sabiendo que no es buena para la salud. I do not understand how people can eat fast food knowing that it's no good for one's health. So in Spanish is comida basura, which could translate literally like, a, like trash food. So it's not like fast, it's like trash. Restaurante. Restaurant. Restaurante. Restaurant. Este restaurante vietnamita tiene unos menús muy buenos entre semana. This Vietnamese restaurant has very good menus during the week. Cuenta. Bill. Cuenta. Bill. ¿Podría traerme la cuenta, por favor? Could you bring me the bill, please? So if you want to tell the waiter to bring you the bill without saying anything, like you just can do this to the waiter and they'll understand you and they'll bring you the bill. And this is the end of today's lesson. Today we did top 10 must know vocabulary for the restaurant. I hope you liked it. Are there any other words for restaurants that you missed on this list? Please tell us in the comments below. If you want to get more Spanish lessons, please check the site SpanishPod101.com. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And please don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Hasta luego. Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hello, my friends from SpanishPod101.com. I'm Efraín. And I'm Diego. And today we're going to have a great topic. We are going to learn how to compare in Spanish. So enjoy, enjoy the video. video. So, what's the deal with the comparisons in Spanish? Basically, in Spanish we can compare in three different ways. We can compare for superiority, superioridad, equality, igualdad, and inferiority, inferioridad. Let's start with superioridad. For superiority, you use más que. It can be used with nouns adjectives and verbs. Let's start with nouns. Yo tengo más músculos que Diego. That's not true. Anyway, so in this case, Efraín is saying yo tengo más músculos que Diego. In this case, the word músculos goes in between más and que. The nouns, either countable or uncountable, goes in between. So I can also say Tengo más imaginación, uncountable, que, or yo tomo más agua, que, and so on. Now, let's see an example with an adjective. Yo soy más moreno que Diego. That's definitely true. So, in that case, moreno goes in between más and que, just like the nouns. Finally, let's see how it works with verbs. En este video, Diego va a hablar más que yo. Very good. So, 
with verbs, with actions, más que go together. And then you just compare the action. En este video, Diego va a hablar más que yo. Now keep in mind that after que, you will say yo. You will not say me. In English, you will rather say Diego speaks more than me. But in Spanish, no, it's like if we were saying more than I. So keep that in mind. Now, let's see inferiority. It works exactly the same as superiority. Yeah, it's just that you rather use menos que instead of más que. Let's see some examples we saw in the previous one. Yo tengo menos músculos que Diego. Now, the next one. Diego es menos moreno que yo. En este video, yo hablo menos que Diego. So, as you can see, the collocation is exactly the same as más que. Now, a note on superiority and inferiority. We have already seen that we can use más que and menos que for comparing nouns, adjectives, and verbs. But be careful because we can also use más de and menos de. In this case, we're going to compare quantities. So we use this for countable nouns, not uncountable. So let's see two examples. Number one. Diego, ayer salí con una chica y descubrí que tiene más de 40 años de edad. Wow. Muy grande. Te pasaste de lanza. Me manché, ¿verdad? Sí, 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 sí. Now we can also use menos de. Let's see an example. Diego, hoy hice menos de 15 minutos para llegar a tu casa. Pretty easy, right? Now let's see equality. For the equality, we use tan como and tanto como. Tan como works for the adjectives, but wait, let's see how tan works all by itself. Tan means so, and it helps for intensifying an adjective. For example, ¿Qué haces Efraín? Estoy viendo a mi novia, es tan hermosa. So, in this case, he's saying she's so beautiful so tan intensifies beautiful now if you want to compare you just want you just need to add como so for example i could say mi novia es tan hermosa como la tuya pero diego tú no tienes novia anyway so let's see now tanto como Tanto como works for comparing the verbs. And just as más que and menos que, tan como goes together. Let's see one example. Efraín, vamos a pedir una pizza, pero una chica, porque tú no comes mucho. Yo como seis rebanadas y tú dos. No, Diego, mejor una mediana. Yo como tanto como tú. Ok, perfecto. Finally, let's see the nouns. For the nouns, be careful because we can compare either countable nouns and uncountable nouns. For the countable nouns, we will use tantos como or tantas como. Be careful because that depends on the gender, tantos, masculine, tantas, feminine, and we add the S, tantos and tantas. So, let's see one example. Diego, en México hay tantos mexicanos como sombreros. Oye, eso es racista. I was just kidding, my friends. <laughs> well, anyway, so in that case, he's using tantos sombreros because you can count the sombreros. You can say one sombrero, two sombreros, three sombreros, and so on. 
Now we can also compare the uncountable nouns, but for the uncountable nouns we would rather use tanto and tanta. For example, in Mexico hay tanta vida nocturna como en Amsterdam. Eso es. We use tanta como because we cannot count the nightlife. We cannot say one nightlife or two nightlifes. No, that's why we just say tanta vida nocturna como. So now let's see one exercise for you to practice. I have 50 pesos and I have 20 pesos. What comparisons can you think of? I'll give you five seconds. Okay, we will give you some possible answers. Yo soy más rico que Diego. Diego tiene menos de 50 pesos. Yo tengo más de 20 pesos. Or even you can say Diego no tiene tanto dinero como Efraín. And although in this case I am using the equality form, I am also negating it. So basically I'm saying I don't have as much money as Efraín. That's it, my friends from the Spanish Pod 101.com. We hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please give us your thumbs up and let us know your opinion here in the comment section. Hasta luego! <laughs> <laughs> Hasta ahí está, eso estuvo bien. Hi everybody, Rosa here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Spanish questions. The question for this lesson is, what are some Spanish idioms that refer to parts of the human body? English speakers have phrases like a pain in the neck and get back on your feet. In this lesson, we are going to discuss idioms about body parts in Spanish. One day in Spain, someone may gently say to you, Te echo una mano? Literally translated as, can I give or cast you a hand? It works in a similar way to the English expression and more naturally translates as, can I help you? If someone pone la mano en el fuego por ti or puts the hand in the fire for you, consider yourself lucky because the expression poner la mano en el fuego is a solemn way of showing loyalty to someone. For example, pongo la mano en el fuego por mis hijos. I put the hand in the fire for my sons. You are expressing that you trust your sons no matter what. If you know someone who really tells it like it is, you can say, no tiene pelos en la lengua, literally meaning, he, she, hasn't hair in the tongue. This means that you are very frank and don't hide your true feelings about something. You may be familiar with the Spanish word boca, meaning mouth. However, be careful of bocazas. Bocazas literally translates as someone with a big mouth and describes a person who can't stop speaking or someone who tells your secrets. It can be used affectionately with friends, but the strangers would take offense to this, so be careful. Another idiom involving the mouth is Lo tengo en la punta de la lengua, or literally, I have it on the tip of the tongue. You can use it when you are very close to remembering a word or phrase you've forgotten. If you are having problems at work or at home and need to accept responsibility for some wrongdoing, you'll need to dar la cara, or to give the face. For example, te equivocaste, ahora tienes que dar la cara. Literally, you were wrong. Now you have to give the face. This means you can hide and must face the consequences of your actions. Let's do one with the eyes. For example, andar con ojo, to walk with eye. This is used when you have to take care or be cautious about something. It's like the English to sleep with one eye open. Tener buen ojo means to have a good eye. 
like to the English meaning, it expresses that you have a good sense when you choose or decide something. Another one would be costar un ojo de la cara, meaning to cost an eye of the face. This means to pay a lot of money for something or that something is very expensive. Please note that these expressions often use the singular ojo, eye, instead of ojos, eyes. If we go back down the body, we arrive at the feet. Entrar con buen pie or entrar con mal pie. Literally, to enter somewhere with good foot or to enter somewhere with bad foot. This means that you are starting something with good or bad luck. The same way English speakers might say to start off on the right foot. For example, He entrado con buen pie en la familia de mi esposa. Literally, I entered with good foot in my wife's family. And don't feel strange if someone te toma el pelo, meaning takes your hair, because that just means someone is teasing. For example, Ana, no me tomes el pelo, meaning Ana, don't mock me. Another funny expression is rascarse la barriga, scratch your own belly. This means that you're lazy or don't want to do anything. For example, mi marido se pasa el día rascándose la barriga. Literally, my husband passes the day scratching his belly. Our last one is about effort and hard work. It's dejarse la piel, meaning leave the skin. For example, me voy a dejar la piel por aprobar el examen. Literally, I'm going to leave my skin to pass the exam. It means that you will do everything necessary to achieve the goal you want. How was this lesson? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Please leave them in the comment below and I'll try to answer them. Hasta luego! See you later! Hi everyone, this is Rosa and today we'll be doing top 10 phrases tourists should never use. So let's begin. Es repugnante. That's disgusting. Es repugnante. That's disgusting. Just keep it to yourself, I don't know. <laughs> Mi país es mejor. My country is better. Mi país es mejor. My country is better. I feel there are people that might not say this like directly, but like think it, think, think it and kind of show it in some other way, I don't know. Preferiría estar de nuevo en casa. I'd rather be back home. Preferiría estar de nuevo en casa. I'd rather be back home. I mean, that's your problem, I guess, not the... Like, what can I see? Maybe that person hasn't put enough interest, like, in researching or looking for some activities on... Uh, looking to meet, to meet new people there. Just try a bit harder and I'm sure you'll find something. Cállate. Shut up. Cállate. Shut up. So, yeah, not very good manners to, <laughs> to tell someone to shut up. <laughs> no estoy muy interesado en vuestra cultura. I'm not very interested in your culture. No estoy muy interesado en vuestra cultura. I'm not very interested in your culture. I guess this happens a lot like in maybe Southeast Asia and all these countries. Like people just go to, I don't know, like maybe relax and have some fun, but they don't really, are not that interested in, I don't know, like knowing the local people, the, their culture and everything. Um, I think I'm also a bit guilty of that, maybe. No me gusta conocer gente nueva. I don't like meeting new people. No me gusta conocer gente nueva. I don't like meeting new people. Uh, it might be hard for some people to be open and talk to strangers and everything, but then I feel like it's people that really make the difference in your experience of a place. I don't know, try to make the, the effort. Vayamos a comer a un McDonald's. Let's just eat at McDonald's. Vayamos a comer a un McDonald's. Let's just eat at McDonald's. I, I've been guilty of that 
to like when traveling with a like large group of friends, like we would be like going to one place and no, oh, this person cannot eat this or doesn't like this or it's too expensive. Okay, let's go to another. And the same thing over and over again. And in the end, it would be like, okay, let's go to McDonald's and just grab something. Está asqueroso. This tastes awful. Está asqueroso. This tastes awful. I don't know. You can think that. Maybe you can tell it to your friends, but... I mean, if it really, 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 really tastes horrible, like they've made some kind of mistake, like maybe you can tell them, but, but not that directly. Me quedaré en el hotel todo el día. I'm going to spend the day in the hotel. Me quedaré en el hotel todo el día. I'm going to spend the day in the hotel. I mean, it's your time, it's your money. <laughs> I don't know. But it's a, it's a pity that. I don't know, you are in a different place and you don't go out to experience it. Mm. Sois unos incivilizados. You people are uncivilized. Sois unos incivilizados. You people are uncivilized. Mm. Like you are so used to your customs, your traditions and everything. If you see something different, it might seem to you more primitive. Ay, and, and this is the end of today's top 10 phrases tourists should never use. Uh, tell us if you've heard someone say one of these things before in the comments below. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe and check out SpanishPod101.com. See you later. Bye. Ay, ay, ay. You've decided to study a new language. So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Hi everyone, this is Rosa. Today we'll be doing the top 10 phrases you'll need for a date. Let's go. ¿Te gustaría salir a cenar conmigo? Would you like to go out to dinner with me? ¿Te gustaría salir a cenar conmigo? Yeah, so I think like taking someone for dinner is a very like, safe plan for a first date. ¿Estás libre este fin de semana? Are you free this weekend? ¿Estás libre este fin de semana? Are you free this weekend? So you can change este fin de semana, this weekend, for uh, hoy, today, or whichever day of the week. ¿Te gustaría quedar conmigo? Would you like to hang out with me? ¿Te gustaría quedar conmigo? Would you like to hang out with me? Another way of saying it instead of te gustaría would be ¿Quieres quedar conmigo? Do you want to hang out with me? A bit more direct maybe, but yeah, can... it's good to be direct sometimes. <laughs> Eres muy mona. You're so cute. Eres muy mona. 
you are so cute. So if you are telling that to a boy, you change mona for mono. <laughs> yeah, or maybe guapo, which could be more like handsome. Te ves genial. You look great. Te ves genial. You look great. When you are greeting, greeting the other person, like it's a good thing to say. Like, hi, how are you doing? You look great. Ha sido una noche estupenda. That was a great evening. Ha sido una noche estupenda. That was a great evening. Yeah, a good way to, to say goodbye. Yeah, a good closing to a date. Yeah, so you can also say, like, you could text this to the other person, like, after getting home or... <laughs> I don't know. Te llamaré. I'll call you. Te llamaré. I'll call you. So I feel like nowadays, like, no one really calls, right? Like, it's like, I'll text you. So it would be like, te escribiré. Te llevaré a casa. I will drive you home. Te llevaré a casa. I will drive you home. I don't have a driving <laughs> license yet. ¿A qué hora quedamos mañana? What time shall we meet tomorrow? ¿A qué hora quedamos mañana? What time shall we meet tomorrow? Just bear in mind that Spanish people, well, might be a bit late, so I don't know, try to, try not to take it personally or something. Yeah, not, not everyone, of course, but that's a stereotype that there's out there about Spanish people. ¿Qué te parece este sitio? What do you think of this place? ¿Qué te parece este sitio? What do you think of this place? So another way to say it would be ¿Qué piensas de este sitio? Which could be like a more direct translation of What do you think of this place? So this is the end of today's lesson. Today we did top 10 phrases you'll need for a date. Tell us which phrases you'll use, you'll use in your next date. Uh, and please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and if you want to get more Spanish lessons please check out SpanishPod101.com Bye! <laughs> <laughs> if they hear your voice you're like ah, sexy like I don't know to like ha 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 To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking you need to review here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, Use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, sign up for your free lifetime account.
no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start reviewing more every day. Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hello there, friends from SpanishPod101.com. My name is Diego. And I'm Efraín. Yeah, and today we're going to talk about tongue twisters. So we hope that you have a lot of fun because, of course, we will have it. So enjoy Get the video. It! So a tongue twister is a phrase that is designed to be difficult to articulate properly. Therefore, saying tongue twisters help you improve your diction. Now, in this video, we're going to show you seven that are going to be from the easiest to the hardest. And these tongue twisters are used all over Latin America and some of them are entirely Mexican. So the challenge for you guys is this. Try to pronounce these tongue twisters with the same pace and rhythm than us. So let's start with the first one. Okay, the first one is ¿Cómo quieres que te quiera si el que te quiere no te quiere como yo te quiero? Okay, ahora rápido. ¿Cómo quieres que te quiera si el que te quiere no te quiere como yo te quiero? Good. <laughs> the second one. Me trajo tajo tres trajes, tres trajes me trajo tajo. Me trajo, trajo, tres trajes, tres trajes. Me trajo, trajo. Maldición. Me trajo, trajo, tres trajes, tres trajes. Me trajo, tajo. Ah, eso. Ok. El siguiente. R con R guitarra. Ay, no, perdón. R con R guitarra. R con R carril. Rápido ruedan los carros. Rápido el ferrocarril. Let's say it fast. R con R guitarra, R con R carril, rápido ruedan los carros, rápido el ferrocarril. Sí. Good, bien. Ahora vamos con trabalenguas más difíciles. La araña con maña amaña la araña. La araña con maña teje la telaraña. La araña con maña es una tacaña. La araña con maña amaña la araña. La araña con maña, maña, la araña, la araña con maña, teje la telaraña, la araña con maña es una tacaña. Good. Okay, the next one is really difficult for me. Uh, we are not the best in tongue twisters, but let's try it. Tres tristes tigres trabaga, tragaban, otra vez, otra vez. <laughs> tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en tres tristes trazos. En un trigal, en un trigal, tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en tres tristes trastos. Ok, let's say fast. Eh, tres, triste, tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en tres tristes tractos en un trigal, en un trigal tragaban tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en tres tristes... Ok, let's try two. <laughs> ok, tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en un tres... <laughs> Tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en tres tristes trazos en un trigal. En un trigal, tres tristes tigres tragaban trigo en tres tristes trazos. ¿Qué? Ok, let's go to the next one. Ok, the next one. Este es difícil. Este es difícil para mí. Compadre, cómpreme un coco. Compadre, no compro coco. Porque como poco coco, como poco compro. Ok. Compadre, cómprame un coco. Compadre, cómprame un coco. Compadre, no compro coco porque como poco coco. Como poco. No, no, okay. Compadre, cómprame un coco. Compadre, no compro coco porque como poco coco. Como poco compro. Oh, oh yeah. bien. I wanna bien. try it. I wanna try it. Compadre, cómprame un coco. Compadre, no compro coco porque como co poco coco. Okay, next one. Let's the next go one. On the, the last one. one. This okay. is the most difficult. <laughs> El volcán de parangaricutirimicuaro se quiere desparangaricutirimicuarizar y quien lo desparangaricutirimicuarice será un gran desparangaricutirimicuarizador. Ok, once again. Um, 
El volcán de Parangaricutirimicora se quiere desparangaricutirimicorizar y que lo desparangaricutirimicorizi. <risa> Otra vez, desparangaricutirimicorizi. Ok. El volcán de, Parang de Parangaricutirimicora se quiere desparangaricutirimicorizar y que lo desparangaricutirimicorizi será un gran desparangaricutirimicorizador. ¡Sí! A ver, try to. Sí, try. Uh, no, no, I don't want to try it. Okay, so this is a bonus for you guys. I haven't found a single person that is able to pronounce this. Okay, so we have a name, and the name is Eustachio, right? That's the name of a person, Eustachio. But are you able to pronounce Eustachio three times? Are you able to say it three times in a row and very fast? I haven't found a single person that is able to do it. So. Why don't you try? Why don't you say Eustachio? Eustachio. Okay, and I try to say it, but three times. Three times. Fast. Fast or slow? No, no, fast, 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 fast. Eustachio, 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 Eustachio. No. Eustachio, 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 Eustachio. No. Eustachio, ¿verdad? Eustachio. Eustachio. Eustachio, Eustachio, Eustachio. Eustachio. Hopefully, guys, you can do this. If so, please let us know in the comment section. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching us, friends from SpanishPod101.com. And um, please give us your thumbs up if you like this video. And um, please subscribe and write your comments below. Uh, and that's it. So <laughs> see you in the next video. <laughs> Hi everyone, this is Rosa and today we'll be doing top 10 phrases to use when you're angry. Let's begin. No es de tu incumbencia. It's none of your business. No es de tu incumbencia. It's none of your business. Okay, so if someone asks you about something you don't want to say anything about, like, and you're, I don't know, a bit upset maybe uh, at this person, like you can say this. Cállate. Shut up. Cállate. Shut up. So, very straightforward. If you want someone to be silent, <laughs> you can say this. Déjame en paz. Leave me alone. Déjame en paz. Leave me alone. So, if you are very busy or if you don't want like another person to talk to you for a while, um, You can say this. It's not very nice, but you can say. <laughs> Estás de coña? Are you kidding me? Estás de coña? Are you kidding me? So, for example, if someone is saying something to you and that thing like really surprises you and you, I don't know, didn't think that that could happen, uh, you can use this sentence. Depending on the tone you use, uh, you can use it with friends, and it doesn't have to imply you're angry or, or anything. It's more like a sur you are surprised, you are, I don't know, you didn't expect to hear that. So, I mean, it's very informal, but uh, it doesn't have to mean that you are angry at the other person. Como quieras, whatever. Como quieras, whatever. So, I don't know, when you are tired of discussing with someone, you just want to end the conversation, you can say, como quieras, like, whatever you want to do, you want, it will most likely be finished. <laughs> Corta el rollo, cut it out. Corta el rollo, cut it out. For example, if someone is making a lot of excuses, is trying to explain something, and you just want them to, to shut up and, yeah, stop, I don't know, making excuses or whatever, you can say this, corta el rollo. No quiero hablar contigo. I don't want to talk to you. No quiero hablar contigo. I don't want to talk to you. You want someone to give you some space and not talk to you for a while, you can say that to this person. Estoy molesto. I'm upset. Estoy molesto. I'm upset. So yeah, you can say this if someone has done you something Um, and yeah, you're feeling a bit mad about it. ¿Y qué pasa? So what? ¿Y qué pasa? So what? Maybe if someone 
makes a remark about something you said. Um, I don't know, the other person like uh, is complaining about something or found some problem, but you don't think that thing is important. You can say, ¿y qué pasa? Um, so what? No me estás escuchando. You're not listening to me. No me estás escuchando. You're not listening to me. When you are discussing with someone and like the other person goes on and on and he isn't really listening to you, you can say this, for example. And this is the end of today's top 10 phrases to use when you're angry. Tell us in the comments below what you say when you're angry. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel and check out SpanishPod101.com. Hasta luego! I'm not angry. Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hello, friends from SpanishPod101.com. I'm Efraín. And I'm Diego. And today we're going to improve your vocabulary with words that you can use every day in your life. So, enjoy, enjoy the video! video. Carolina es tu mejor amiga, ¿no? Así es, Diego. Y cuéntame, ¿cómo, cómo es ella? Ay, ella es una persona eh, súper inteligente, es divertida, todo el tiempo está feliz, es amistosa, es simpática, eh, nunca es grosera, tampoco es aburrida para nada. Wow. So, you may have recognized some of these adjectives. But these are very common adjectives. In this video, we will tell you more synonyms of these words that you can use on a daily basis to describe someone. So, let's start with the first one, inteligente. Let's give you an example. Carolina ha leído más de 10 libros en este mes. Wow. Ella es una persona inteligente, culta, instruida, y lista, por supuesto. Diego, ¿y cómo es tu hermano Víctor? Mi hermano tiene muy buena complexión física, entonces podría asegurar que él es guapo, es agraciado, apuesto. Claro, además, él se lleva muy bien con las personas. Es cierto. Es simpático, es agradable, y por supuesto encantador. Sí. sí. Y yo he visto que cuando toca el piano, eso lo pone muy feliz, lo pone contento y, por supuesto, alegre. Totalmente. Y además, él cuenta muy buenos chistes. <risa> claro. Es divertido, chistoso, ocurrente, gracioso. Y dime, Efraín, ¿cómo te gustaría ser recordado? Muy buena pregunta, Diego. Uh, pues a mí me gustaría ser recordado como una persona interesante, como una persona cautivadora, uh, como alguien atrayente. Okay. Y no solo eso, me gustaría ser recordado como una persona amistosa, eh, una persona afable, como alguien accesible a los demás. ¿Sabes? Esas son buenas características. Yo también puedo afirmar que Efraín no es alguien aburrido, o desganado, o desanimado, o adormecedor. Claro, don Diego, muchas gracias por tus palabras, sí. son muy bonitas. Sí, sí. Oye, ¿qué pasa? Te veo triste, muy triste, afligido, ¿todo bien? Ah... Um... Pues no todo bien, yo iba caminando y una señora me dijo, hey, ¿qué traes en la bolsa? Y yo le dije, ah, traigo mi llaverito y se empezó a reír, solamente se empezó a reír no puede y ser. eso me ofendió mucho. Ay, no puede ser, qué, qué señora tan, tan grosera, tan maleducada, tan antipática, tan insolente. Claro que sí, qué personas hay en esta tierra. Oh, vaya que sí. Now, let's test your knowledge with some exercises. The first one. Miguelito acaba de conseguir un nuevo trabajo. Miguelito está... Feliz, contento, alegre. 
a Paula se le acaba de morir su perrito. Paula está muy triste o afligida. Diego y Efraín son guapos, apuestos, agraciados. A Nacho le gusta mucho jugar ajedrez, le gusta mucho leer y nunca ha regresado con ninguna de sus ex. Nacho es una persona Nacho es una persona inteligente, culta, instruida, lista. Muy bien hecho, Nacho. Sé como Nacho. That's it for today, my friends from SpanishPod101.com. We hope that you have enjoyed the video. If so, please give us your thumbs up. And if you have any opinion, let us know in the comment section. Nos vemos en el siguiente video. Hasta luego. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. And start learning more every day. Want to speak real Spanish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at SpanishPod101.com. Hey there, my friends from SpanishPod101.com. I'm Efraín. And I'm Diego. And today we are back for more just because you asked for it and now you have it. This is a very Mexican expression and it is... Orale! This word with so many meanings and enjoy, enjoy the video. video! Woo! So this expression was born precisely with the idea of hurrying up people. It comes from the word ahora, which means now. Then it became hora with H. And after that people just took took out the H and we had the word hora. Exactly. Uh, finally, Mexican people added LE just to make it an imperative, as we have stated in a previous video. If you haven't watched that video, please go watch it now. So, in that case, we could say something like, hora, hora, que te pasa? Or, orale, orale, que te pasa? Which means like, Right now, what's going on with you? What's happening? After some time, people have adapted this word 
to convey many different meanings. And now we're going to give you eight different ways where you can use the word orally. Number one, I agree with you. Diego, ¿por qué no vamos a comer camarones ahorita que salgamos y acabemos el video? Órale, va, 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 va. vamos, vamos. Number two, come on. Diego, ya regálame tu sudadera. No, o sea, ¿cómo que crees? ya me la regale. Órale, no. órale, me queda bien no, bonita. No, no, bien, no, órale. No, no, no. Number three, bring it on. Diego, estás fuerte, pero yo creo que te puedo partir la cara, ¿eh? ¿Tú crees eso? Sí. Órale, a órale, ver. Órale, perro. Ah, ah, órale, perro, oh, okay. todo así. Ok, sí, sí, sí. <risa> Number four. <risa> Hurry up. <risa> ok, Diego, vamos ya porque ya terminando este video, tengo que irme a la casa de mi tía. Órale. Pues, órale, apúrate, órale, vamos órale. ya. We can also use orale to convey there you go. For example, Diego, préstame 50 pesos, necesito para unos tacos y para gorditas. Uh, y sí, un agua. sí. Órale. Eh, Gracias. Pero me los devuelves mañana. Sí. Okay, so the next one is for just saying, okay. For example, um, oye, Invité a Gerardo a grabar videos con nosotros. Eh, él va a explicar y, y lo demás. Y tú puedes, tú puedes vernos desde atrás de la cámara. Ah, órale. Sí, sí. Sí, está bien. Está bien. The next one is for conveying go ahead. For example, me andas del baño. Este. Uh, Órale, ve al baño, no me digas. Eh, no, 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 espera. Tenemos que terminar esta parte. Órale, te toca hablar. Uh, uh, well, in that case, this expression means it's your turn. Last but not the least, we can use órale as a way to express that something is amazing. In Mexico, we use wow. But we, but we can also use orale and orale. Yes, with that sound, orale. For example, Diego, estaba viendo el otro día y en menos de tres días en SpanishPod101.com uno de nuestros videos alcanzó dos mil visitas. Orale. Sí. De no verdad. Manches, en serio. Increíble. Orale. <laughs> That's it for today, my friends from SpanishPod101.com. We hope that you have enjoyed the video. If so, please give it your thumbs up and share it with other learners. And also, if you have an opinion, please leave it in the comment section. We do read them. So, see you in the upcoming video. <laughs>